with the beginning of the new year, which is heading off with a great start, let's look back at the first truly post-pandemic year, as 2023 was remarkable in which... Fuck all of it! <laughs> I had toys with the Godzilla figures truly shook the kaiju figure market and overtook the declining SH Monstars line when it comes to Godzilla figures as the number one line. I passed the thousand subscriber line truly stepping deep into the turbulent world that is the YouTube hellholes and spent way too much in a particular gacha game in which was already too late before I realized and I was gambling over an anime waifu. In doing so, let's look back at 2023 by talking about the top 10 figures released last year. With the return of the highly anticipated Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi, fans were eager to fill themselves but ended up with a real mid-series. But the only bright side regarding the series were the figure releases in which the highlight is the SH Figures iteration of the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, Darth Vader. Darth Vader here possesses all the characteristics that a top figure should strive for. This includes the screen actor and fantastic sculpt that Bandai was at the top of, the numerous accessories that allows loyal consumers to fulfill their man-child desires, and the improvements made onto the previous Return of the Jedi version of Vader, such as the cloth capes and rock-hard hands that elevates the Dark Lord to the list, and there isn't anything that degrades the figure and only shows how many great figures were released last year. With the breakneck finale of the Witch of Mercury and Mobile Suit Gundam's first officially gay couple, why are you gay? It was obvious that Bandai would implement black magic in providing their warmongering fans who have a hard on for dead miners trapped in mechs with the best they have, unlike a particular line. And Bandai had to release two mechs that stood on top of the rest, both of which shook their pilot to the core. And if you're not a Gunpla fan, but for the rest, we got a superb model kit in which the rebuilt version of Ariel and the later released Caliburn are so close but miles apart as Ariel retains the remote gun bits all attached to his body that can be detached and used for offensive purposes long size for going to initial feminine design and in its place is retrofitted with a more mature and militaristic look which does accurately reflect the tone from the first to second season. On the other side is Gundam Caliburn in which, unlike the Ariel, retains more of the traditional Gundam design, which without the Gumbus as portrayed through the anime. With the all-white plating and the inner cycle frames being exposed in certain spots, not to mention the small boosters on the back and the multicolored V-fins that resembles a particular Gundam. And if you have both, you can recreate one of the best fights in the list, only being suppressed by a bigger one. With that said, these two Gundams are a great addition to the Gundam collection, and if you're a mech fan, these are the only two mechs on the list. So if you're expecting a hard-on for mechs, you'll be severely disappointed. Coming in at 8th place is a figure that was released near the end of the year and I had zero expectations at release. But come and behold, the figure arts iteration of Indiana Jones was beyond what I could expect. Such feat is achieved through the impressive amount of details regarding the outfits such as the leather jacket or the iconic hat, the wrist filled face that is a one to one replica of a younger version of Harrison Ford, capable of portraying a variety of expressions, and a numerous assortment of accessories that are accompanied by Indy. From not only the hands, but even the various armaments such as the revolver to Indy's iconic whip that make Indiana Jones a true bang for your buck. Regarding any drawbacks, there really isn't that much. But even so, if there are any Indiana Jones fans left after the Vial of Destiny, I would recommend the figure arts here as it retains the top tier quality in which you won't be disappointed, unlike the theatrical releases. 
coming in at 7th place is the sole fake character on the list, the Figma Berserker Unknown Heroine Alter. Wow, that is a mouthful. Or in short, the Sith Assassin. But what differentiates this lolly from the rest of the Fate roster is the simple, but commonly seen, character design but added with an intricate and sexy outfit. This is in addition to the impressive range of articulation that is commonly seen throughout the Figma line, allowing the beloved Lolita to conduct a wide variety of poses. But maybe the most impressive component regarding this figure are the accessories in which besides a hoodie that conceals the character's underage identity alongside the standard hands is the arsenal that Berserker here possesses. From the Sith Red lightsaber iteration of Excalibur, the double-sided lightsaber that can chew bubblegum and kick ass, and the forced lightning released through the hand, making for a Star Wars fan's wet dream, and surpassing even the ultimate sugar daddy himself. The only gripe regarding Lolita here is the wrist armor which, while flexible, easily falls off, and both sides have to succumb to such effect, in which super glue was the only saving grace. But even so, I would definitely recommend this figure to both Fate fans and Star Wars fans. But if you're a fan of both, like me, congratulations! You're both a nerd and a degenerate. In Japan, there is a saying, simple is best. And there is no other figure that represents that principle than Fitness Iteration Kazumi, aka Violet. When initially looking at Kazumi, besides the sleek black leather outfit, there isn't anything remarkable regarding the design, especially compared to the likes of either Fate or Genshin characters. But the true beauty lies in Kazumi's simplicity, as Figma stayed loyal regarding the application of hidden details, as those cheeky bastards had the audacity to add belly button definition, the slightly visible collarbone. Nice cleavage, and by lifting the legs, great ass! you also can't forego the face as the sleek fox-like face superbly portrays Kazumi's healthy nature and is proof that she will mature into an attractive woman. That kids, you son of a bitch! This is not mentioning Kazumi's armament as they are intricately detailed with the rapier retaining the elegant shape while the Winchester lever action shotgun possessing an impressive marking. But maybe the most impressive aspect is the extraordinary range of possibility as Kazumi is capable of conducting a variety of battle tactics, especially CQC, which not only abides to Kazumi's gymnastic background, but also highlights that this girl can kick some serious ass. I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. With the recent releases in the Monster Arts line which has shown a degradation in quality, accessories, and the increase in price, let's just say fans have been veering towards alternative goods from competitors that offer more bang for your buck. But one particular franchise within the Monster Arts line refused to follow such mediocrity, had the balls to say no and stay put to the core values that elevated the line to its former glory. That is, the Gamera line starting off with 2023's oh, fucking kids, but Rebirth Gamera. This version of Gamera is one of the top-notch figures manufactured by Bandai to be released last year in which, just like his predecessors before, didn't allocate the resources into either marketing or fancy license fees, but rather allocated those funds into providing Gamera with the respect the titular kaiju deserves, as portrayed through the intricate details inscribed onto the skull and the organic paint job beautifully applied, with the lack of any paint blotches whatsoever. But Bandai didn't end there as probably due to the Assistance by Karokawa, Bandai strived for screen accuracy in order to replicate every aspect that was shown in the anime. As portrayed through the abundance in accessories that enables Gamera here just like a mech through an intricate but simple transformation sequence to alter into his doggy dogfighting mode, in which Gamera goes full on aerial and either engages hostiles air to air or by biting the Japanese traditions, engages in the kamikaze run. The only gripe I have is the arm falling off, but compared to recently released monster arts, it still leaks beyond and can be considered sturdy. But besides the singular point, the rebirth iteration of Gamera is a fantastic release and takes the fifth place on the list. For the fourth place is another monster arts from the same franchise, which is a lonely anticipated and a personal favorite of SH Monsters iteration of the hentai protagonist. The main antagonist from Gamera Revenge of Iris. Iris. 
Taking a look at this glorious eldritch being, it is maybe one of Monstar's greatest achievements as Bandai spared no expense in recreating the hentai being as the immaculate form seen in the film is accurately portrayed into figure form with the separately sculpted pots and beautifully applied with extreme levels of paint job that Bandai refused to apply not only in their Godzilla figures but also their prestige gunpla line. This is not mentioning the massive scale that Iris retains as the towers over most kaijus and even goes toe to toe with the larger Haya toys line. But maybe the most impressive factor is the assortment of accessories that Iris is accompanied by. But not only this superb stand that can even hold a release later down the list, but the components that allow an overly complicated transformation sequence that departs from the typical kaiju transformation and instead more akin to the Zeta Gundam, allowing for an ever more massive form of Iris, which figure engineering wise is not only impressive, but also makes the titular hentai protagonist the pinnacle of an aerial kaiju that can even outclass the big G. But larger wings don't do shit against the king of the monsters seen by recent records. But this figure isn't all squeaky clean as the articulation compared to his monster's temporaries is lacking. But considering the source material where the movement was minimal, it's screen accurate. But the fragility regarding certain pieces, especially the tentacles, where they have a tendency to fall off and that price. But even with those faults, I'm still in love with this figure and with all its merits, gladly give the SH Monsters Iris fourth place. For the number 3 spot are both the King of the Monsters version of Godzilla and the Heatray version. First, setting my eyes on the initial GVK version of the King of the Monsters himself, it came with a bang. <laughs> as it provided the kaiju figure fanbase who were starved for a screen accurate version of the big G with what they craved for. But Hyatt Toys wasn't content as they improved and alleviated the few issues that plagued the initial release in which such fruit is what you see here. And I have to say the Hyatt Toys keeps on giving the fanbase as not only do they have a highly detailed version of the Big G that happens to be accurate to the films, but it's also huge to contemporary brand and in the case of the Heatray version it is accompanied by a pair of accessories, something a particular line which released a similar figure in the same year failed to accomplish. The only gripe that I retain is the limited amount of articulation, but uh, considering the previous improvements and that price, the sacrifice all worth it. In doing so, both big G's takes third place. And coming here at second place is none other than the false king itself, the higher toys iteration of King Ghidorah. Released late last year and came to me early this year, recency bias is still in play. But after giving it much thought, between the remake of the big G and Ghidorah here, I had to simp over this magnificent dragon. This is not just in due to the outstanding amount of details that are all embedded onto the sculpt, alongside the massive size that makes Ghidorah here stand out among his peers, but also an impressive amount of details woven into the sculpt as portrayed through the three separate heads that retain their individual characteristics as depicted in the film, alongside the wings that are able to be folded and bent, perfect for placing on the shelf. The only nitpick, and I mean nitpick, is the limited amount of movements in the joints, but considering the price, the cons don't hold a candle to the feast that Ghidorah provides. Definitely worth buying. And coming at number one is the SH Monsters remake of Gamera from the film Gamera Revenge of Iris. While Gamera doesn't possess the immense size like Ghidorah or the intricate articulation from the Figma Violet, what Gamera does possess is the superbly intricate amount of details embedded and rendered in plastic form. This is from the head as Bandai supported by Kadokawa forsake their inaccurate head from the original unlike a different figure and this time rendered one that accurately depicts the design from the film. This is in addition to the paint overhaul, as the relatively dull and non-shiny color scheme was completely replaced with a dark and shiny paint job that further highlights the details already embedded on the skull. And we aren't finished here as the accessory roster that Gamera has in possession is on another level, as not only is there a full-on mech style transformation on Behold in order to replicate the flight mode, but there is the signature fire punch and the newly added skull 
Skywalker and Boo, making this the pinnacle of not only what an SH monster should strive for, but what other figures from separate lines should as well. 